everybody and welcome to Horgus Vlog for Agricology. Uh, my name's Richard Smith and I do a regular piece so I hope you're finding uh, the vlogs that we're posting uh, to be useful. This month we're actually standing in a red clover stand and I wanted to talk to you about how we fatten our lambs. You know we have a lot of visitors to Dalesford and a lot of comments that come from farmers uh, that red clover is okay for fertility building but how do you utilise it and make it a useful crop? Our red clover lays would normally stay in for about three years and primarily they're, they're there to build fertility in topsoils to help us with the following cereal crop. But I use it in lots of ways. We take a cut of silage normally about the end of May and we take about 10 tonnes of fresh weight silage. Possibly even take a second cut around the end of August. This year, because we silage so late, what we lost in a bit of quality we made up for with quantity. So one cut on this field was all that was required this year. Now the aftermath will grow very quickly. It's very drought resistant and, and it recovers um, at a great speed. So we'll normally wean our lambs around the beginning of August and then wean them onto these red clover lays. It's a fantastic fuel. A lot of farmers will worry about bloat. Uh, and putting lamb straight onto a red clover lay. However, what I do is I put a sprinkling of rye grass into the red clover. What your lambs will do is actually come onto the red clover lay, they'll walk through it and nibble out all of those grasses before they get onto the red clover. Once they get onto the red clover, they've built up that stomach bacteria to deal with it. Uh, and I can honestly say that in all the years that I've put lambs onto red clover, I have never lost a lamb to bloat. I have had a problem when growing pure stands of red clover, completely pure, and it wasn't bloat, it was what I'd call red gut. I'm not a vet, but I believe that the oestrogen within the red clover um, actually strips the mucus off the lining of the stomach and they'll end up with a sore stomach, and we call that red gut. Uh, and you can actually see it, you know, there'll be red at the back end with a little bit of blood. But that's very rare, and I haven't lost one since we've been putting this bit of a grass mix in as well. The other advantage of putting ryegrass into your red clover is that you'll actually get a bulkier, sweeter crop when you mow your silage. So we're fattening lambs. These lambs are on here. It's now the end of August and I know that they're doing 300 grams a day live weight gain. So it's a tremendous rocket fuel for fattening lambs. It's a very dense crop, so you find that as you get into the autumn, soil temperatures drop, gets a little bit muddy elsewhere, clover will keep them right up on top. So it's been a really useful um, crop for me in an organic system. Red clover is also very useful as a green manure. So now you're green manuring, you're fattening lambs or cattle, we're cutting silage from it, uh, and so it makes it a very general purpose useful crop. Now. The other thing I wanted to talk to you today about was uh, worms. Now, any if you're sheep farming, um, a sheep's worst enemy is another sheep, and it's usually because of internal parasites and the build-up of them, so Nematodirus, Ostratagia, and others. We opted to use a system called FECPAC about 10 years ago, and that has been invaluable. OK, well these are some of the lambs that have just come off the red clover. We're just going through them now to see if there's some nice fleshy ones for slaughter. These were weaned three weeks ago, straight onto red clover. We've got no dirty bottoms and they're all looking very bright uh, and healthy. And as I said before, you know, it's, it's not unusual and I would fully expect for these lambs to do about 300 grams a day when they fully get onto the red clover. So we can more or less manage our fat stock from store to fat by putting on to red clover. And as I say, people are really worried about bloat. A lot of farmers will question the fact whether they can graze lambs on to, straight onto red clover. But with that little bit of grass mix in the bottom, you will find that the lambs will graze through the grasses first, then come onto the red clover. So absolutely thrilled with the performance of these lambs. You can see that they're super bright and healthy, and these are going to keep going forward and do us very well at very low cost from this red clover lay, which is primarily there to do fertility for the following cereal crops. So, just to finish up with this month's blog and following on from seeing the lambs fattening out in the field on that red clover, I did touch earlier on on the control of internal parasites in sheep. It's the sheep's worst enemy without a shadow of a doubt. What we did was we invested in a FECPAC system. It's a system that was developed in New Zealand some years ago. 
and it's been the best thousand pounds that I've spent, I think. What it does, it gives you all sorts of information. You can actually work out which parasite it is that's uh, affecting the gut of your sheep and, and then indeed the sheep's performance. Um, you can also so then treat that accordingly with the proper drug if you have to. More importantly, it allows you to build a picture on your farm of where the really sheep sick areas are and which parasites are present in those areas. So we would use it as a useful tool when planning grazing the following year. So for instance, if I had a really dirty area um, where the sheep, where it was affecting sheep badly, we would then graze cattle on that land the following year. Obviously we can't do that in all areas and we'll have permanent pasture in quite a lot of the parts of Dalesford here. Um, and sheep are always going to graze there, but we can determine which parasites it is that we were targeting if we have to. Now in a really dry season, and I seem to remember that 2011 was very dry, we actually fattened our entire crop of lambs without any use of anthelmintic drugs at all. Get a very damp year and a warm damp year, and obviously you all know that there's a high prevalence of, and you can get the Matadoris explosion.